when you're but an infantryman on foot, but are pit up against a Bane Blade tank or a Hulk in Carnifex, look no further than your Thunder Hammer to deliver the Emperor's justice. Such an iconic weapon deserves a special paint job to make it stand out from the run of the mill weapons that the other Astartes pick up at the armory. Guys, this is MC the Miniature Surgeon here to show you how to paint up an awesome Thunder Hammer that Thor would be proud of. For this example, I'm going to use a Nemesis Demon Hammer from my Grey Knight set, and I'm going to prime it with Chaos Black Spray. The 2 to 1 mix of Cantor Blue and Abaddon Black, I'm going to pick out one corner of my Thunder Hammer first, and coat around half of the hammer face in a radial fashion, radiating outwards from the corner. Now for this step, make sure you cover all three flat surfaces that the corner radiates out from. After you're done with that, repeat the same process for the opposite side of your thunder hammer, as well as any other areas that the light emitted from the energy may catch onto. Now with a slightly thinned down mixture of Cantor Blue alone, we're going to go over the area that we picked out in the last step, but leaving just a tiny amount of the previous color showing. Again, it's important to use a radial brush stroke method to create this effect. It helps to imagine as if the energy is radiating outwards from the corners of the thunder hammer, Remember for this step and all the remaining steps, it's important to have your brush as dry as possible to prevent the paint from gobbing up, which would ruin all your hard work for the previous layers. This can be done easier if you paint towards the corners. While you're at it, go ahead and pick out anything that will be glowing on the hammer face. Now with a slightly thinned down mixture of Teclas Blue, we're going to repeat the exact same process as with the last step, but this time focusing even more towards the corners of the hammer and the more intense areas on the symbols. Also taking care to pick out the hard edges on the pull of the hammer where the light from the hammer would catch onto. With Loth and Blue, we're gonna repeat the same process, but this time focusing on a much smaller area. When you use this color to pick out the symbols, use it almost as a highlight color and focus on areas like the skulls, the brow of the skulls, and the maxilla area. I find that using your pinky to stabilize your hand on the hammer helps a lot with this step. For more tips and tricks on highlighting, go ahead and check out this video on the top right right now. With a mixture of Lothern Blue mixed one to one with Oathline Grey, we're going to give the hammer a very focused dry brush. Make sure to be very selective in this process and keep the dry brush as dry as humanly possible and only, only catch the raised edges. We don't want to ruin the glaze that we just did. This step would really help blend in all the previous layers and give a very good guide as to where to put our next highlights. With Ulthwan Grey, we're going to now just pick out the very tips of the corners on our Thunder Hammer. the dry brush of Ulthwan Grey, we're going to intensify the highlights even more using the same technique as we did with the light blue mixture, this time focusing on the brightest corners the most. To complete the gradient effect, we're going to use white scar to lightly dot the very corners of the thunder hammer. A lot of people find it difficult to recreate a convincing lightning effect on their weapons. But it's important to just take note from nature, and to know that lightning is actually just formed by electrostatic discharges, during which two electrically charged regions in the atmosphere or ground temporarily equalizes themselves, and thus produces a completely random discharge of arcing energy. So the best way to simulate this effect is to just imagine random dots on the face of your hammer, your painting, and just join them up. In this example, I'm using a thinned down mixture of white scar to give it a more varied intensity, as well as give me more control over it while I'm painting. And there we have it guys, a thunder hammer that Thor himself would be proud of. A few things to bear in mind. Use gradually brighter colors in a thin down mixture to create a gradient to sell the effect of an illusion. Ah, sell the effect of illusion, I'm fucking stupid. And there we have it guys, a thunder hammer that Thor himself would be proud of. A few things to bear in mind guys, use gradually brighter colors in a thinned down mixture to create a gradient to sell the illusion of a glow. 
dry brush very lightly can help bring out the most subtle of raised textures and give a good guide as to where to put your subsequent highlights. Always take reference from nature to figure out how to mimic a certain effect. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let me know in the comments section what weapon effect would you like to see next. I'm so sorry guys that there haven't been any new videos coming out recently. The day job of being a surgeon has been eating into my free time quite a lot, but things should be clearing up right now, and I just can't wait to pump out more awesome content for all you great viewers out there. Guys, this is MC the Mint Surgeon, signing out.